Good afternoon, everybody. You're listening to Westchester Talk Radio, produced by Sharp Creative and made possible by our friends over at Entergy, Indian Point Energy Center, White Plains Hospital, Hightower, Westchester, Park Sterling Realty. And uh, here we are with our team from Hightower, Westchester, order of, of appearance. We have Roman Chiosik, the managing director and partner, Richard Flav, private wealth advisor and director of research and planning, and Peter Lang, also a managing director and partner. Welcome, everybody. Um, looks like everybody's healthy. Glad to see that. Hope all, everybody's doing well. Um, Roman, why don't you give us an overall view of, of what we're going to cover in this presentation? Sure. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having us here today. I mean, clearly these are unprecedented times and hope everyone that is listening is doing well and healthy. Um, as all of us, I think we're all adjusting to the new norm. And as much as possible, we're trying to operate business as usual. Clearly, it's difficult as per the environment as to what it dictates. Um, but I think what we're doing a lot more of right now is, is a lot more being proactive, listening to clients, and customizing their overall needs as, as we kind of see fit. Um, in some cases, we find ourselves managing different behaviors uh, in addition to the asset allocation and the risk within the portfolio. And, and I think more than ever, it's now when is when our clients need us the most is to really give them a sense of what's the path forward, to give them some clarity, some visibility, and things that are more qualitative for their life and helping them move forward. Nice. Uh, Roman, I know, look, we're only going to be about 15 minutes or so. You want to just give us a little overview of, of how we're going to do it here, who's going to speak and, and, and what we're going to cover? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, look, this is something new for all of us, obviously doing it in this sort of medium. Uh, what we're going to do are cover basically four things. So I'm going to just give an overview about our practice as far as how we're operating from a technological standpoint. Um, then we'll talk about the team a little bit. Richard um, will discuss more so around asset allocation with respect to uh, markets, the volatility, and try to provide some insight and clarity around that. And then Peter will address really more the core of financial planning, fiduciary, things to think about within this type of environment. And then I will conclude with just give, giving some opportunistic things, some strategies that all of us could implement moving forward. And can you provide us a little color uh, as to your current office situation right now, given the circumstances? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, it, I think uh, more than anything, as, as we stress test portfolios, um, I, I think at this point of, of, of where we are, it's, it's as important to stress our team and stress the, the important points, part, parts of it. And I, I, one has to attest, and I think all of us could speak on that, is that we have an incredible team and we've all rose to the occasion, knowing the circumstances as to where they are. We're all working remotely. So literally all of us, Deirdre, Richard, Peter, myself, Ronnie, we have access at home, so we have everything set up. It's as if we're in our office. We're literally having calls being forwarded here, um, so that's working extremely well. The other parts of it, and, and many of us are going to the office two, three times a week just to check mail and things that are sort of pressing, if you will. Um, the other part of it, the custodian that we're dealing with being Fidelity, and, and i got to give them a lot of credit. They've yet to skip a beat as far as what our needs are. They're extremely proactive. They're involved. They're engaged. So we're extremely happy with that. I mean, we're hearing horror stories of people not having as good access to their custodian. Um, and a third piece of that is just around Hightower Corporate. Again, very proactive, engaged, involved. As many of you know, we have a hub in, in, uh, in the city and there's our headquarters in Chicago. So again, they're very involved as well. Mm -hmm. And if we want to bring things back to the, the current situation, I, look, I know you guys are involved in a lot of community events. Um, can you share with us some of the things that you're currently doing now? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think for most of us, just like uh, our clients and prospects and things, I mean, priority number one is making sure our families are okay. Um, we're, as, as many of you guys are on the front line of all of this, and as much as with the health piece of it is the important part, uh, our world, as many of you know, is extremely volatile as well. And just we're trying to make sense of this. And again, we're, we're out there um, doing a lot of different things. We're, we're involved in many different sort of charitable events as well. We, need, we kind of have the need to get engaged and involved from a team standpoint. We're doing a lot of things as a team with Feeding Westchester. As many of you kind of know, there's probably about uh, one in 13 that are food deprived. So we're, we're really trying to step up and I'm sure it's gonna be a lot more with that. 
Uh, Richard, I know him and myself are involved in Rotary, which, which is extremely proactive in the community. Um, yesterday, we were delivering food to some families that actually needed some help. And I know Peter is very much involved in the NIAC Center. So we're, we're trying to stay relevant because I think more than anything is these are the kind of things that are kind of standing out there more than ever. Yeah. And, and you know what? They are all wonderful things. I've personally seen you guys out there with Rotary, um, with the Chamber, uh, with Feeding Westchester, as a matter of fact. So, you know, thank you, by the way, Roman, you know, for all the work that you do for the community. Um, you know, it's just you're, you're a special guy and it's a special firm um, doing all kinds of stuff and, and helping others. So um, at this time, let's let's turn over to Richard, um, who's going to provide a little bit of a market overview. Richard, welcome. Thanks for having us, Andy. Appreciate it. And good to hear you and you and your family are doing well and all safe. So, yeah. And, you know, look, obviously um, the markets have sold off significantly and we're now in a bear market territory. Right. So can you talk about that a little bit? Tell us what's transpired. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, do you guys have three hours? Because, uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, it, obviously a lot has, has happened and it's happened really fast. Um, I think, you know, as Roman mentioned, these are unprecedented times when you look really from a personal and, and health and as well as financial side, you know, and, and, you know, I have Bloomberg here on the TV next to my desk. And, you know, I mean, you're seeing industry veterans of 40, 50 years saying, you know, I've, I've thrown my playbook kind of out the window. So, you know, listen, there's there's uh, there's been a lot of volatility. There's been a lot of difficulty in the markets. I think, you know, when you look at this chart here, you'll see that there's been very little that's been safe. Um, really, the only quote unquote green, green shoots we're seeing are, are positive territory or cash. You know, you're seeing treasuries as well as some gold. But, you know, this is different than 2001 and, and 2008, where, you know, those were more kind of financially led recessions. Um, this is this is different this time around, right? We're not working, we're not out spending, the consumer behavior has completely changed. And, and if you look at the next slide here, you'll see that, you know, it's it's been one of the quickest drops uh, from a bull to bear market we've seen in history. In fact, it is. It, it took about 16 days, trading days that is. Um, on average, it takes about 10 months to go from a bull to a bear market. So, you know, we're on that, that far left-hand side, that dark red. So, you know, this caught a lot of people by surprise. Um, you know, I think uh, the, the speed of which was contributed to a, a lot of the passive kind of algorithmic type investing we've seen kind of over the last eight to 10 years. Um, but, you know, if you look, there, there's other factors at play too with oil. Um, you're seeing massive supply coming on. Um, there, there's issues with OPEC and the Saudis and, and Russia. And, and, and that's kind of, you know, just compounding these uh, exogenous shocks that we're seeing. So, um, you know, if you go to the next slide, you'll see just employment numbers or, or I guess, lack, lack thereof. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is an interesting chart. It really just shows you the correlation between, you know, kind of unemployment claims and, and GDP. And you can see how tight they really are. And, and, and this employment will be a key indicator to watch, right? It's going to be one of the most important data points, um, you know, as far as understanding the depth of the reception, as well as when we start to recover. You know, if you look at, you know, the, the unemployment numbers or unemployment claims that came out this morning, they weren't good either. Um, we've lost, you know, or almost half, if not more at this point, of all the jobs gained since the great financial crisis. And, and it literally happened in two weeks. So, um, you know, the speed at which this happened and small businesses are, are greatly affected. They're the backbone of our economy. And, and we're going to see some some pretty negative numbers here in the next quarter. But, um, you know, we'll get into the outlook here. But, you know, unemployment is going to be something to watch. And, and having said that, I mean, the government and the Fed have stepped in to help, you know, what, what, what does that look like now? Sure. Uh, it, it, you know, there are, everyone's deeming this kind of the bazooka and, and things of that nature. But, you know, when you look at it, it, it was bigger and faster than almost anything we've seen in history. Right. Um, you know, the fact that we were able to go through 2008 and have a lot of these different policies and procedures in place is the reason we were able to move as fast and as big as we were. And a lot of people are saying that the reason we, we might not dip into a depression is because of the fact that we had a lot of these different kind of levers to pull and as fast as we were. But, you know, we've seen a, you know, over two and a half trillion dollar package targeting basically everything and everyone. You know, it's provided liquidity in bond markets. It's, it's loans to small businesses. It's unemployment compensation. So, you know, it will help. 
is it the the be all end all to to cure this 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 uh, you know kind of recession we're in? No, but you know we're lucky that we have this ability. Not a lot of countries across the globe have it. Um, but as you can see here on the slide, you know these are unprecedented times. And, and as far as just government stimulus, I mean, you look at the far right hand side in Europe and in Japan, you know, the, the percentage of the country's GDP, the, the stimulus that they've rolled out, um, it, it's significant. And this is a global, a global problem. And, and you know, we, we will see the light at the end here. But for the time being, it's it's important, and, and we're lucky to have a lot of the the different stimulus that, that the government's laid out. It, it's likely not the end. We could see a, a fourth and maybe even a fifth package, you know, around additional help to small businesses, states, and municipalities. You know, healthcare and hospitals. So, um, you know, we we are getting help, um, but ultimately, I think the, the the virus itself is gonna is gonna drive a lot of this. Mm. Yeah, Richard. I mean, thanks for sharing that information. A lot of telling, uh, a lot of telling info up there. Um, what are you What are you doing for clients in their portfolios at High Tower now? Sure, and and you know, just to take a step back. I mean, myself, Peter, and Roman. Are, are all kind of on our investment committee and, and we, we make a lot of these decisions as far as allocations and, and outlooks together. So, um, you know, and, and then as well as just Hightower Home Office as another research arm. So, you know, we take a lot of pride and a lot of time in, in kind of coming up with these outlooks and, and allocations. And, you know, it, it, I think the question is almost better asked, you know, what have we been doing prior to this, right? I think over the last kind of 12 to 18 months, you know, we were aware of where valuations were. I mean, 2019 earnings were zero and the market was up over 30%. So those were things that we had discussed. You know, we came in with a relatively healthy kind of cash balance, a diversified portfolio for, for our clients and, and, and allocating to kind of uncorrelated assets, you know, alternatives such as gold and, and managed futures and things like that. So, you know, we, we tend to look over a longer term cycle, more of a three to five year cycle and we'll select managers and, and active funds, so stock picking type mutual funds, um, as opposed to the passive index type funds. And, and this has really become a stock picker's market. And this is where having the expertise of funds and portfolio managers within your portfolio um, ha has really paid off to our benefit. Um, you know, just, just for clarification, kind of passive ETF investing has been, um, you know, kind of the flavor of the day or flavor of the decade, I should say. Um, and everyone's really been allocating to these. But again, you get 100% of the upside of the index that you're investing in via these passive ETFs. And then on the downside, you get 100% of the downside. So when we looked at where our portfolios were several years ago, we've been swimming more towards the active side. Um, but I think when you look at what we're doing now, it, it's you know harvest, harvesting losses where applicable, um, you know, rebalancing potentially here and there where it makes sense. But you know, we're ultimately looking longer term. And, and there's such unknown out there that, you know, we felt comfortable when you don't know what direction the market is going, you know, it's better to, to maintain these diversified portfolios and, and take action when we have more clarity around numbers and things like that, which are still to come. And where, where do we go from here? It's a good question. Very good question. I think we have, like I said, a lot still to come. So we don't know what forecasts are looking like for earnings. Um, we don't know what quarter two GDP will look like. I mean, we have a, a decent sense of, of how poorly it will likely look. But I mean, you know, this is, this is a, you know, there's going to be new precedences set around how we work, the way the markets work, you know, way people interact with each other. I think, you know, generally in history, these global kind of pandemics have, and health emergencies have, have been somewhat transitory in nature. So they, they come and, and go. Um, but, you know, we, we've been talking about this, this phrase here the last couple of weeks is they don't ring a bell at the bottom, right? Um, you know, I think for us, it's, it's, we're not market timers. Um, you know, if, if you look at this slide here, or, excuse me, there, uh, Andrew, the last one, you'll see that the, the bull markets tend to run a lot deeper, a lot longer than do the bear markets. And this is where not being a market timer you know, and staying invested over the long term, it, it adds to your benefit. And if you go to that last slide there, you'll see that you know, over the last 25 years, if you remain fully invested, you know, your compounded annualized growth rate over the last 25 years is just over 7%. And I think this chart tells a lot, right? If you were out of the market for the best 30 days, your return was zero. And if you're out for the best 50, you were down, you know, over three. So this tells a lot, and this is what we, 
base our allocations around. Um, we're asset allocators. We're not stock pickers or stock timers. We can't predict prices. Nobody can. Um, but I think when you look out at your own accounts, and I think this is just from an actionable standpoint for people who aren't necessarily our clients, just make sure you're in the right risk bucket. Make sure you reviewed your 401ks, your, your, your brokerage accounts. And if, if you have an advisor out there, this is where they make their money. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot on our end to be in front of this and talk to clients um, as far as what they're doing and what we're doing. So um, at the end of the day, we don't let emotion take over or cloud our judgment. And, and we, we try to stick to our guns and, you know, we have the staff to, to do that. And uh, with that, I'll kind of pass over to Peter and to talk about some of our financial planning aspects. Yeah. Hey, uh, Richard, thanks so much for that. I mean, some, some really great information there, certainly way over my head, but I tell you what, um, you know, it's, it's valuable for people to see this and uh, I appreciate all the work you put into it. Um, we're going to talk with Peter now. Uh, Peter, can you briefly explain what a financial plan is and its importance? Sure. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, to kind of build exactly on what Richard, Richard finished off on, you know, a financial plan, think of it as your roadmap, or in today's parlay, it's more like your GPS in your car, right? We barely, any of us barely go anywhere without having GPS going to know, you know, right turn, left turn, et cetera, and, you know, to get us to our destination. Your financial plan really is just that. It's, it's kind of documenting your goals, your risks, you know, what you're saving for, what you're investing for, what's important to you. You know, do you have a family, you know, are you saving for college? Are you saving for retirement? Are you saving for a house? You know, and all those different things. I just mentioned three broad things, you know, saving for a house for, for college and for retirement. All three of those things, depending on your age, um, have different uh, risk, have different timelines, right? I've got two daughters who are teenagers. One's going to go to college in the fall. So my time frame for saving for her for college is pretty much done because we're going to start spending the money that we saved. My younger daughter's got a few more years, so I still have time to save more money for her for college. And at the same time, I'm starting to think more seriously about retirement as an example. If you're younger, if you're in your 20s or 30s, you're probably really thinking about your, ha your first buying your first home. So one of the things that we do in our financial plan is to kind of lay out that roadmap, not for the next two months or six months deciding what the market's going to do, we take the market out of it. It's like, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want your money to do for you for the long term? And, and Peter, what is asset allocation and why does it matter? Um, again, building on, on Richard, you know, the, one of the, I think the first slide that Richard showed was, the, you know, that what we call our quilt, the investment quilt, which shows the returns of all asset classes over given in given years. And what you notice when you look at that quilt is you'll see the returns are, are rather, let's call them haphazard at best. Right. Nobody knows which is going to be the top asset class every year until the year is done. So by diversifying a portfolio in stocks, large cap, small cap, growth value, international, in bonds, you know, long term, short term, government, corporates, in alternatives such as, you know, gold. Richard mentioned gold earlier and managed futures and real estate. Um, you know, we're going to get different returns over different time periods. Ultimately, the goal of asset allocation is to smooth out the bumps in the market. Now, yes, we get time periods like we've just witnessed um, where everything went down, not everything went down as much. So if, if your portfolio consisted of just the S&P 500 over the, you know, starting in the end of February, you know, you were down some 30 some odd percent. If you had a diversified portfolio, not just in stocks, but stocks, bonds, and alternatives, you probably had returns that were certainly negative, but maybe down 10 or 15 or 18 percent, not down 30 percent. Um, so asset allocation is really important. Again, it's not putting, you know, the old adage of not putting all your eggs in one basket. You know, Peter, I always hear you guys um, refer to yourselves as a fiduciary. Can you tell us what a fiduciary is? Um, sure. Um, in its simplest form, you know, fiduciary is a legal term saying somebody that, you know, has to place your interests ahead of their own. So as investment fiduciaries, we place the interests of our client ahead of our firm and ahead of our own interests, which means every time we make a recommendation to a client for whatever that recommendation may be, it's really done with their best interest at heart. Um, not with our interest, but with their interests. Okay. And can you just quickly explain your investment process to everybody that's listening right now? Sure. You know, again, building on the fiduciary and the asset allocation and the financial plan, 
you know, we incorporate those into kind of a, a pretty methodical, not linear, but circular process. And the reason it's not linear is because it does, you know, we need to constantly revisit it. So, you know, when a, a new client walks in the door, we take a great amount of time to try to get to know them, their goals, their objectives, their risk tolerances, and we codify that into the financial plan. We then take the plan to help us develop our asset allocation. Once our allocation is developed, we then select the actual investments, be they mutual funds, managers, or however we're going to invest for the clients, alternative investments as well. Um, and then there's a constant monitoring of what we're doing for clients. And, you know, so we'll review that on a very regular basis. Um, and then again, the clients come in when we come in for semi-annual or annual reviews. Suddenly they'll tell us, hey, something has changed. We've decided to move. We're starting a business. We're buy, you know, going to buy a, a vacation home. Whatever that is, suddenly that causes us to go back and revisit kind of that, that circular process that I just spoke about. You know, and Peter, look, these are unprecedented times, right? I mean, why not just throw in the towel? Um, in 30 years of doing this, have you ever seen anything like this before? Um, and I can honestly say that, that I haven't. Um, you know, I think the, the best line that I always think about is, you know, and my, I think Mike Tyson said it, you know, everyone has a plan, except when you get punched in the face, your plan kind of changes. <laughs> this was definitely a punch in everybody's face. And again, this is why, you know, our job with our clients is to go back, revisit that financial plan to say, hey, you know, you, you're 52 years old, you're saving for your retirement in 15 or 20 years. Stay the course, be patient. Um, you know, that's really the key. And a couple of weeks ago, I wrote, and it's available on our website, I wrote a pretty lengthy uh, market commentary, really reflecting back almost on about 100 years of history putting it, everything in a little better context. I did it really more for myself. It was to soothe my own frayed nerves. Um, and then I, with some help from, from Richard and Roman and Ronnie on our team, we kind of smoothed out the rough edges and put together, I think, a pretty cogent um, long-term document. Um, so clients, take a look at that prospects. Please take a look, go to our website, it's there. Um, I think it'll help put a lot of the uh, turmoil in, in some better perspective. Peter, thank you. You know, thanks for, thanks, for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for sharing all that information with us. Let's bring Roman back in um, to wrap it up. Roman, why don't you tell us some things that investors should should also be looking for uh, regarding opportunities? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So, um, you know, as as the things keep changing, we always tell clients is look the research that we look at from the day before. This narrative is moving so quickly that we literally have to delete all the stuff. And so for us, it's sort of getting our arms around everything, whether it's the Care Act tax laws, all of that that's kind of coming front and center. It's like a bazooka. So we're trying to really decipher all this information and really put things into context for many of our clients. Uh, I mean, some key takeaways, and I think this is what our team does well, is, is really communicate all aspects of the planning process, right? We want to become our client's chief financial officer, where we have the ability to really help quarterback that relationship with their attorney, with their accountant, with their spheres of influence in our family. For us, it's having the holistic viewpoint which is critical. Um, some key takeaways, make sure your financial plan, as Peter sort of alluded to, is up to date. Um, for some of the business owners that we're dealing with, I mean, look, these are challenging times and it's updating the budget, making sure that the things you're doing ultimately will play themselves out in a proper manner. Um, some of the things that we're also being pro proactive around, um, as, as asset allocation plays an important role, obviously uh, there's been volatility and some assets have come down which creates an opportunity to potentially look at some IRAs that one may have. And particularly if it's after tax dollars, it may make more sense to pay the taxes and then convert those funds into a Roth. Um, again, check with your tax advisor, but these are some strategies as those funds grow, you're getting tax-free money that's ultimately growing. So it's clearly a, a positive strategy. Then, uh, also, RMDs are required in distributions, as many of you may know. The number for taking mandatory now is from age 70 and a half to age 72. So for this year in 2020, the CARE Act also allowed people to not take their RMD if they don't need to, or if you've already taken it, you can put it back within 60 days. Um, so it's, it's clearly a positive, and there's also some benefits of if you need to take out money from retirement, for, for if you've gotten affected by some of this, then, then there are some things that you can do without penalties as well. 
A um, couple of other things, as many of you know, is, is that the, the delay for taxes has been July 15th now. So it gives people a little bit more time to figure out what they're going to do. And then they can also make contributions into those call it, uh, retirement account IRAs, simplify things at that time as well. For other, some of the more elaborate plans that we're managing, such as cash balance, defined benefit plans, uh, there are a little bit specific and different guidelines for business owners. But but again, um, we, could, we could talk through that as well. Um, and lastly, and I think most importantly, and, and now when we're sort of challenged with adversity, we all kind of tend to look at um, things such as your wills, uh, your trust, your state planning, life insurance. It's it's, you know, we always emphasize and stress the importance of it, but when it comes to times like this is when people really start looking at this more so. Because when and if we're faced with something like this again, you want to make sure you have that HIPAA form. You want to make sure you have that healthcare proxy, power of attorney, things that are mandatory. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're kind of reaching out to for our clients and prospects to make sure everything is done and done correctly. Nice. Uh, Roman, thank you for that. Uh, Peter, Roman, Richard, this was really very informative. Um, thanks for taking the time to share this with our audience and yours for that matter. Um, I just want to once again uh, remind everybody you've been listening to Westchester Talk Radio, which is produced by Shark Creative and made possible by a host of sponsors. Once again, Richard, Peter, Roman, thank you very much. Stay healthy and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Take care, everybody. Take care. Stay healthy. Hightower Westchester is a group of investment professionals registered with Hightower Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC, and with Hightower Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities, LLC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors, LLC. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities. No investment process is free of risk, and there is no guarantee that the investment process or the investment opportunities referenced herein will be profitable. Past performance is not indicative of current or future performance and is not a guarantee. The investment opportunities referenced herein may not be suitable for all investors. All data and information referenced herein are from sources believed to be reliable. Any opinions, news, research, analyses, prices, or other information contained in this research is provided as a general market commentary. It does not constitute investment advice. Hightower Westchester and Hightower shall not in any way be liable for claims and make no expressed or implied representations or warranties as to the accuracy or completeness of the data and other information, or for statements or errors contained in or omissions from the obtained data and information referenced herein. The data and information are provided as of the date referenced. Such data and information are subject to change without notice. This podcast was created for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are solely the those of Hightower Westchester and do not represent those of Hightower Advisors LLC or any of its affiliates. Hightower Advisors do not provide tax or legal advice. This material was not intended or written to be used or presented to any entity as tax advice or tax information. Tax laws vary based on the client's individual circumstances and can change at any time without notice. Clients are urged to consult their tax or legal advisor before establishing a retirement plan.